My name's Laura Aldridge and I'm an artist based in Glasgow. I make things using different materials like clay and fabric. Something I like to do is when I do a particular project, I like to make myself a folder. It's a place for me to put all the information that I gather while I'm doing a project. So that could be notes, it could be plans and measurements. I often make sketches and plans of how a work's going to look in the galleries. All this is really useful for helping me think about how something might look or be when it's in the gallery. So this is my biggest folder, it's my Ecozy folder, and I thought it would be really good to share this with you today as it's what we're going to be doing together. So eco dyeing is where you lay different plant material onto fabric and then through sort of a heat process of steaming or boiling you can imprint the plant material onto the fabric. Sometimes you get quite abstract, quite diffused colour and then other times you get almost perfect prints of leaves so that's a geranium there printed in. So I've shown you what eco dyeing looks like when it's finished. Now we're going to make some together. You're going to need some fabric and it needs to be natural fabric so things like cotton which is what I have here or you could use silk or wool or linen it can't be man-made fabrics like polyester because they can't take the dye you're also going to need your plant that you've picked some string and some scissors some old nails and I'll explain about why later and some pennies and some tubes to wrap your fabric onto. Anything round you can find. So what I've done is I've soaked my fabric in vinegar overnight. This is just one of the things that helps the colour stay on the fabric. So squeeze out your fabric and then lay it on there nice and flat. And then you're going to make a pattern onto your fabric with your plant material and place it like so you probably see I'm only doing it on half the side of the fabric. So this is because my pole is smaller than my fabric and I want this to fit on there. So what I do is plant material down one side and then we fold it in half. So I'm just going to put a bit more on there to make it look nice and lively. Something you can do to help the colour get out of your leaves is use little bits of metal. So old rusty nails. There we go, see the better of that. I might even put a penny in, because that's copper. And then when you're happy with your arrangement, you fold your fabric over, press it nice and flat, and you choose your pole. So I'm gonna go with a, a copper pole. You just roll your fabric. So the tighter you get it, the better. And you roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. So to keep that nice and secure, just like go round, you don't need too much. Nice and tight, go round your fabric. So I've made nine now, and they're all wrapped up as you can see on different things, on sticks, on metal, on copper. And I'm gonna put some in this old saucepan, and I'm gonna immerse that with water. So these ones are gonna go in like a dye bath. And then I'm gonna put some in this old fish steamer. So the heat from the steam will push the colour out. Now when you're doing eco dyeing, you must use old pots. You can't use anything that you use to cook with. I'm going to put a metal one, a wooden one, copper. I'm also going to put this loose little bit of copper and some old two peas I found.
So with the one that you're steaming, you want the fabric to sit above the water. So you don't want it to be in the water. So just enough water underneath and that comes through and steams the fabric. And with this one, this is our immersion bath. So it's a bit like having a bath. Cover the fabric and a bit more so that it doesn't boil away and leave the fabric exposed. Right. This next bit you're probably going to need an adult because you need to cook your fabric now. Once it's boiled, let it boil for about an hour, hour and a half. If any longer and you start to boil away all the colour. So here are the ones from the steamer. I've left them overnight. The longer you can leave them, the better the results you get. So I left them overnight after steaming them for I think an hour and 20 minutes. So take this one out. This one's been on a, an old steel pole. So you can see it's really changed colour and it's even dyed the string. So this one's quite exciting, I think. There's little bits of green, bits of blue. Got some nice brown from the rust of the pole coming through. No real leaf prints, but there's still some interesting colours on there. Cut that string off. Be careful not to get your fingers. All the string has sort of stopped the dye dyeing the fabric, so you've got a nice crisscross shape of the string. Ooh, ooh. Now already before I open this one out, I can see you've got some really nice prints from the from these leaves. There's lots of black that's come through. Oh yeah, look at that. So that's the blue flowers, remember? It's gone all, it's gone all. This one I really like this one. You can see at the bottom all the waves from the string where I wrapped it up. There's some really lovely colours in there. You can see sort of greens and turquoise, yellow, black, brown. Oh, pink! We've got some pink. So maybe actually that's quite close to the penny. So maybe the penny, the copper penny helped push out Oh, let's get this off. So this one's quite delicate, I think, but still really nice. We've got some really great colours in there. So sometimes you get more interesting results from the rust on the fabric. You can start to see which leaves work better. So it's almost like a, a, a photocopy of a leaf. So these are the prints all unwrapped and they're wet. We're going to give them a rinse under the tap and dry them. And what I usually find is once they're dry, you start to see even more details in the fabric. So here we've got some finished ones that I've brought in from the garden. I've given them a quick iron, which you can do. Some of them are really great. I've got some with really strong leaf prints and nice things going on with the different rusts from the metal. Some of them have even got really interesting things that have happened with the string, which I like. So that's like a weird dancey pattern across the bottom. When you first look at them, you just think they're a bit of a mess. And then as you spend some time with them, you start to pick out all these really lovely details like the spines of a leaf or the washer, remember? And then we had the hair clip that went in too. So all these different things add up to make, I think, a really interesting picture. 
I suggest just getting some fabric and giving it a go. The only way to learn is by doing and getting it wrong and then eventually you'll get it really right. 